Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport has us in Colorado Springs, Colorado today. Our guest, the man, the myth, the legend, he's back. And I don't think he really, really ever went away. But Robbie Smith joins us, a heavyweight for Team USA Greco. He won the 130-kilo uh, World Team Trials in Las Vegas. Robbie, welcome back and congratulations. Thank you so much, Scott. I'm glad to be back on the show. I love the show. And uh, yeah, thank you. It was, it was a good tournament. I wrestled well. Um, I was just happy to be out there competing. And uh, it, it was it was nice to compete, not just for competing, but competing back in front of the United States, the crowd here, because, you know, it, uh, I feel that the crowd ever since 2015 at the World Championships, this the, the crowd and the spectators have really taken a liking to me, and I love giving them a show and competing in front of them. So. Watching your post-match interview after you won the, the, the trials at 1.30, um, you made some comments, and, and it was as if there were doubters and, and even maybe some haters out there, people who were not believing in you. Yeah. Uh, can you can you talk about that and what it does to an athlete when an athlete is coming back from injuries? What does it do to you mentally and emotionally? Um, you know, it, it, I was dealing with injury uh, for a while now. Um, hurt my wrist last year uh, before the Olympics. Um, we were training in Azerbaijan. It was uh, actually in... Uh, 2015, I oh, I tore some ligaments in my wrist, partially tore them, and then um, at the Olympics I made them worse. So I had to stop. I had to take a break, get some surgery done with that. Um, and uh, so I was coming back from that. The and actually there was a 90% chance the surgery would work, and there was a 10% chance it didn't, and it didn't work for me. So I was dealing. I've been dealing with that, um, and we're we're on top of it now. And then. Uh, you know, but as after I got back from dealing with my surgery, I came back and I had a high ankle sprain. So then I had a high ankle sprain and um, trying to get back from that. And I was in a boot for almost a month. And, you know, it just didn't seem like it was going to really work and, and, and start working for me again. And so it was frustrating, of course. Uh, you never, as an athlete, you just want to get back to competing and, and doing what you do best. And, um, it wasn't working for me. And I was like, why is somebody trying to tell me something and all this stuff? But then, you know, healed up, started rolling again, was doing okay. Uh, I had about a month to train before Denmark uh, when I went over to Denmark and, and wrestled and, um, you know, had a round robin over there. Uh, I had five matches all together. Um, and uh, I lost my first one, 3-2, but then came back and won four in a row in a dominating fashion. And we actually ended up winning the tournament. Um, so, you know, at, the, at that time, I, I had my wrist and my ankle, but then I tore my uh, tricep, and which was messing with my flexors. So I'm like, man, is my body just getting too old? What's going on? Am I pushing myself too much? So I had to pull myself out of the next week tournament. It was in Croatia. It was the Grand Prix. So um, now I got three injuries I'm dealing with. So get back from rehabbing my tricep to – going to uh you know getting back to work and then i tore my m i sprained my mcl and i was like man wow. i just i just can't win so um but what's great about being a wrestler and what has taught me so much within wrestling is you never give up you just keep go pushing forward um you you have to heal yourself of course but you're going to be okay. And it comes from my support system that I have and, and, uh, the people that love and care for me and, 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 and help me out. So just kept pushing along. People kept telling me, you know, you, I don't care. Even if you're 50%, you're, um, you're, you're still the best wrestler in this country. So, you know, that's my, my dad would always tell me that he's like, I don't care if you're, you're 50%, you're, you only have half a body, you're still going to win. So, um, I just kept that mindset and, and kept pushing forward. But then there, with that, you still – you get people that uh, doubt you. You're so, detractors. Yeah. And um, so, you know, that that dealing with injury, you know, it, it makes sense for people to doubt me. Uh, plus, you know, they they call it Matt Russ, so they don't know, um, you know, if I'm going to be as sharp as I am. And uh, Well, you, had, you hadn't been in competition since – 
since the Olympic Games in Rio, with the exception of the Thor Masters in Denmark, which you did remarkably well at, by the way. Uh, and, and you brought that up. You made mention that perhaps people looked beyond or past your performance there in Denmark when actually it lit up our screen. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and uh, people, I guess, I don't know because of caliber, caliber tournament or, or what it was, but I, definitely people looked past it. I mean, people were saying that, I've only com I haven't competed, but I, I have competed. That's why I went to Denmark to compete to see where I'm at and to see how I'm doing, and um, wrestled well, uh, wrestled really well, um, and beat some quality wrestlers. And uh, so you know, it was. I don't know. It is what it is. It's it, you. You always have the people that doubt and hate and, and um, don't want to believe in you. But for me, I take that as. Um, as just fuel and okay. it pisses me off well, <laughs> but see doubting you is like doubting marshawn lynch okay <laughs> that yeah. pisses off the entire raider nation i consider myself a robbie smith fan because yes. you are that guy you earned that you know it's not yeah. something i just go oh i like robbie smith i like robbie smith because robbie gives us 100 percent every single time and don't give me the 110 crap or no, the 120 crap 100 percent, 100 percent. okay yeah. you give me everything you got there are those young guys that are looking to dethrone you okay and and hey ultimate respect to those guys too but they've got to earn that spot it's yeah. not something that you're going to give them they're going to have to take it away yes sir guys like toby erickson for example yeah. Okay. Toby Erickson. Fine. How about Kuhn? Adam Kuhn. How big yeah. is Adam Kuhn? My God, how big is Adam Adam Kuhn? He's a big man. <laughs> and Sam Stoll. Those other cats, they want to be in your spot. They want to be that four time uh world team member. They want to be that twenty sixteen Olympian, but you got that. That's your yeah. spot. Okay. Right. So going uh, leaving Las Vegas, what did you take away from Vegas? You know, that I it, Leaving Las Vegas, uh, well, great movie, by uh, <laughs> but um, I I didn't have time to really think. I, I I actually I got home Sunday, packed my bag, uh, washed my clothes, repacked my bag, and went to Brazil for the Pan Am Championships, uh, and wrestled down there. And uh, so you know, all it just did is give me confidence, give me that you know I'm still the baddest man in this country, right. and right. Um, I'm I'm the, I'm the best we got and i'm you know going well, ahead look at your performance record man 23 24 now i think international medals with 13 overseas 14 overseas actually 23 medals 10 gold uh you've won the tournaments like thor masters pan american championships dave schultz memorial uh lakarov um uh, the Hevisto Cup, the New York AC International, one of my faves, Sunkiss Kids International. You just keep adding to the wealth of wrestling knowledge by your performance. It's not so much how you practice or how you uh, prepare. It's the performance, you know, at the end of the day. You bring I'm it. A, I'm a gamer. Um, I, I, I love performing. Uh, and that's just my personality. It's been my personality since I was a little boy. Um, that I, I'm out there to put it on a show. You know, I, I want to win, of course. And by winning is by me winning or me putting on my performance and how I know how to wrestle leads to winning. So the crowd reacts to that, and um, you know it's that's what I want to do. I'm not just now at, at my career. I'm it for me to move forward and me to get my name and my brand and everything out there. I have to put on a show. I can't just stand there and hug a guy for six minutes. I have to do something about that. And um, so I go out there and I want to finish people. I look at it like fighting. Fighters go out to knock people out. They don't go out there to play patty cake, get punched in the face. They want to finish you and they want to finish you as fast as possible. That's how I do it too. I want to tech you, I want to tech you as fast as possible. I want to pin you. I want to throw you on your head. I want to choke you out. Um, and that's my mindset. And uh, if you don't have that mindset, if you don't want to be an Olympic champion, if you don't want to be a world champion, you don't want to throw people on their head, get out of the sport. But that's what everybody should be. That's that is what everybody. But that's is. not what we saw in Las Vegas. What we saw in Las Vegas is passivity. We saw several spots on the Greco World team decided on passivity. Are the refs involved too much? Are they quick to call it? Or are the guys not active enough? Um, you know, it, it, it that that's you know, it's a hard. Is there an easy answer, answer to the question? It's not an easy answer to the question. You know, it, guys should be more active, but you know, you we still have that opportunity of a passive point. Um, so they just wrestle to get that, uh, sometimes. So, you know, that there's that, but then there's also the referees don't, they, they feel they have to keep it even for some dumb reason in my mind. 
that, you know, if they call one, they have to call the other. No. If the one guy is being dominant, moving forward and using his position, and the other one is blocking, that's the one that should be getting called for passivity. You have to reward the offensive wrestler. Even though they're, they are winning off of passive points, doesn't mean they're being a pass, or they're, they're just standing there. If they're attacking and they're trying to attempt, they're trying to go forward, they're trying to, to do an action, then they should be rewarded that point. What we're getting in, in the world of not just the United States, but around the world is they hit one, they hit the other. They hit one, they hit the other. They've been doing it for freestyle too. And I think that's the kind of the mindset they have is in freestyle, you want to get the, 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 the clock first because they, you know that he's going to get the clock second and then you win off of that. You see more of that in freestyle than you do in Greco. And that's the, that's the hard part for me is because we're, we're looking at the more boring of styles. But when you see a guy beating someone up and, and dominating the match and you hit him for passivity, that's okay. That's not right. right. You know, the first match came down to that, you know, I, I was the lucky one to get the second call. You, me and Toby were beating, beating each other up the whole time, you know, and they get, they, they knocked him for being passive. I, I thought I was being the more aggressive wrestler, of course. But you never know what these referees anymore. They don't know what they're going to call. Um, but then I didn't want it. The second match, I decided, hey, no, we're not even going to go two passivities. I'm going to finish this as fast as possible. Um, and it's just it's, sometimes it's how the cookie crumbles. It's and frustrating, it, isn't it? it? It's frustrating. It is. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. And uh, it, stuff happens and then we die. That's a, All <laughs> right. A, so, well, let's not talk word. about death. Let's talk about you being healthy now at 30 years old. When you do decide to retire, in your estimation, because you wrestle all of them, who fills the void at heavyweight? You know, um, there, we have a lot of young talent. Um, and uh, we have a lot of young guys coming up. Uh, like there, our, our junior junior champion, Cole. Um, Who's going to be the a junior world team member at heavyweight? Uh, uh, Cole Schultz. He he he's going to be a force to reckon with here soon. He he about I want to say six three or six four. I don't know how tall he is. His fro is so big that I really can't tell how tall he is. But uh, um, he's only sixteen years old, and I get to work with him. Uh, we have Nick Boykin, who's eighteen years old. I get to work with him. But then we have. Adam Kuhn coming up, uh, and uh, like you said, Sam Stoll. Um, I like Sam a lot. Uh, Sam has a really good Greco feel. Uh, Kuhn is, you know, a, a world junior bronze medalist. Um, so I mean, we have a lot of good talent. It honestly, I can't tell you who's going to take my spot. Um, I don't know if I'm going to lose, and I might just retire. And when I retire, that's when my spot gets up for grabs. Um, but uh, you know it. There's a lot of good talent, and when I do decide to retire, I think we'll be ready for the next generation to step up and have dominance, just as uh, as uh, Matt Kafari did, uh, and then Arthur, and then Jameel Byers, and now Robbie Smith. I think I can. I don't have the medal yet um, that I, I that I need to be in that group, but I, I plan on getting that medal. And um, but I have had five years of solid winning. Um, well, and, that, that begs the oh, next question then is in your estimation with all the years you have, uh, in prep for your career that you now own, where is us Greco now compared to say when you first started your international career and does, uh, the hiring of guys like, uh, Gary Mayab, uh, as manager of the Greco program for USA, uh, Matt Lindland and his leadership is all this going in the right direction. Yeah, no, we're definitely going in the right direction. Um, but I mean, I came into the senior levels in 2005 is when I graduated high school and I came straight to the senior level. And um, what's crazy about our sport is our rules have changed so much and we've taken a decline because of rule changes. Uh, we were – when Rulon and, and Matt and Dennis Hall and – and we can, we can go back to Gufari and all those guys when they were winning their medals in, at the Olympics and stuff. The rules were it was more of a pure sport, and then they decided to just destroy our sport, and um, it wasn't pure anymore. And you had to change. You always had to change. It was not just changing once a quad. It was changing three or four times a quad. You know, changing more than once a year. You know, it's and 
so that really that really hurt us. Um, so now that we're back to the the rule changes that we just made, that there's no force part tear and and it's a lot of feet wrestling. They say it's boring, but when Re- Greco has never been a a, a, a scramble. Ooh, ah, uh, like, oh, he might get this. No, it's when it happens, it is happening, and it, you can't stop it. And you get to see somebody fly through the air. And um, we're getting back to that. And we're at the right we're, – we're going the right direction. We're trying to build our sport as much as possible. We're trying to get these young athletes that we need. And, um, and, and so when we – this generation retires, they can just step in. And there's not going to be that gap that we had from got to tune them up, 2008 to 2013. You know, so um, not knocking those guys that wrestled those years by any means. You know, but we we that was the dark ages of Greco-Roman wrestling because the rules changed so much. Right. Like those guys were trying to just survive because the rules were changing, and it weren't changing for the better. They were changing for the worse, and. We those guys were trying their best to keep us up, but when you change the rules from one year to another year, not to help us, to hurt us, to to hurt the U- United States wrestling, um, then then we have a problem. The journey begins with USA Wrestling, and nobody knows the journey better than our guest today in the Nike hot seat, Robbie Smith, the 2017 Greco-Roman World Team Trials winner, the champ at 1:30. And I tell you what, Paris, France is uh, coming up uh, yeah. <laughs> really quick. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, brother. I appreciate yeah. you taking the time. On the way out, I got to ask you two questions. And and the first one's real simple. Give me a short answer. Does the power come from the socks or the beard, or is it a combination of both? It's a combination of both. Okay, uh, easy enough. Um, Raider Nation, are you upset about them leaving Oakland? Or and going to Las Vegas, or are you just part of the Raider Nation, no matter where they are? I'm part of the Raider Nation, no matter where they're at. Uh, it's in my blood. I bleed black and silver um, as much as I bleed uh, red, white, and blue. And um, I represent the greatest country in the world and the two greatest nations in the world, and that's the United States of America and the Raider Nation. And I will never, ever stop representing those two. If Marshawn Lynch were to call you tomorrow, and I know that Raiders have reached out to you on several occasions, if he were to call you tomorrow and say, "Let's go to lunch," who buys? Uh, I would try to buy. I, I think, but uh, I think we definitely have Skittles for dessert um, and uh, have uh, some great food. And I think it's some great conversation. I would try to go if we had to have lunch. We'd have to probably go get some barbecue in Oakland oh, and oh. Uh, have some ribs in Oakland. So that'd be pretty awesome. So well, you know what I'm going to be doing for lunch today. No, you did you did it, my brother. Robbie, we love you so much. Appreciate hey, you taking the so time. Much, Congratulations on uh, your success. And I don't ever want to call it a comeback. It was a little time off to deal with injuries and a continuation yeah. on what has become an outstanding career. Thanks thank for you, taking Scott. the time to join me in the Nike Hot Seat. Hey, Scott, this is awesome. I love being on the show, and uh, thanks for having me again. Robbie Smith, I'm Scott Casper. Have a good one.